What is going on, guys? Welcome to Gregel's TV Daily Rewind, is where we go back a week, give you all of your tech news from the past seven days in one single video, so it makes it clear and concise for you. You don't have to go diving back into something that you may have missed. And this week had a lot of information about the Galaxy S23 phones. We talk about the Z Fold 5. We talk about some other folding phones as well from Samsung that are going to be coming out and so much more. So enjoy this week and we'll see you in the next one. Story of the day is some really, really good news. I have become a huge fan of Fortnite. Uh, I wasn't, didn't really like it before. Now I'm quite enjoying it now. Uh, my son plays with me and it's kind of like our little bonding thing. So I'm really, really liking it. Um, and we've got some good news on that. So if you remember, Fortnite used to also be out for iPhone and iPad. Um, even you could, well now you could even also play it on, it's powerful enough to play it on like a MacBook or an iMac or something like that. But it's been completely pulled away from them after Fortnite and Apple had an issue where, um, I guess Epic Games, who owns Fortnite, kind of went behind Apple's back and said, hey, we're gonna, um, you can get credits or something without having to go through the Apple store, and Apple got mad at that and pulled it from the store, and they, they Fortnite pulled their stuff from there. It was a big legal battle and all this, blah, 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 blah. To make a long story short though, Fortnite is officially coming back to iOS per Tim Sweeney, who is the CEO of Epic, who also owns Fortnite. So come 2023, Fortnite will be back. I think this is fantastic news, as well as just knowing if you have an iPhone or an iPad, especially one of the newer processors, those are extremely powerful, really good graphics performance, and you can bet your bottom dollar that Fortnite's gonna run amazing on these devices. Next up, as you can see from the headline, Galaxy S23 will come in 128 gig version, higher RAM variants also exist. So what they mean by this is we've been talking about a story about the S23 line of phones only coming in base storage of 256. It looks like that information per Sam Mobile and uh, another Samsung site is saying that that information is incorrect, that there will be a 128 gig base version of the S23 and the S23 Plus. To add on to that, if you get the 256 gig version of the S23 and S23 Plus, it will come with more RAM. So you'll get the 12 gigabyte version of RAM on those phones, um, but you won't get it on the 128. You'll still get eight gigs of RAM on those versions. To add on to that even more, this could be different based off where you live. You know, it might be specific to certain, um, you know, some some places in the world might only get the 256 or only get the 228, or they might get both. So there should be a, a mixture of both all throughout the world, um, but it looks like the 128 gig version that was reportedly completely kaput and removed is still alive and will still be around. But the icing on the cake is that if you do get the 256, you should also get 12 gig of RAMs, 12 gigabytes of RAM internally. And our last story of the day, coming from Ahmed, just a, uh, a recap is that the Galaxy S23 Ultra will have a 6.8 inch QHD plus resolution, dynamic AMOLED 2X display, and it'll be able to run through one through 120 hertz. On their S23 Plus will be 6.6 .6 inches, full HD plus, so a little bit less resolution, dynamic AMOLED, uh, 48 to 120 hertz. And the S23 will be 6.1 inches, full HD plus, um, dynamic AMOLED, uh, 48 to 120 hertz. And then, yeah, that's gonna be the sizes on there. Uh, so I'm recording this actually the same day I'm recording the last one because I'm heading to CES the day that you're watching this. And I did not wanna just throw a video in and have to break up my day in there. So uh, uh, you'll see a new video or different clothing at the very least uh, the next time you watch me. But anyways, first story of the day has to do with a really, really cool um, look at how games look on the Oppo Find N2, especially when they're optimized for that big, weird, weirdly shaped display. This information comes from Ben Geskin, and this is what the optimized games look like on an Oppo Find N2. The field of view is not cropped in width, but added to the top and bottom. Unfortunately, most games are not optimized yet. They cut the sides, but here's a look. I believe this is PUBG, if I'm not mistaken. And you can see between the two different views that it actually looks a lot nicer on that bigger display as you would expect it to. And it just be, that's the one thing we've got to get with these folding phones is we have to get more apps and games optimized for that display. So they don't cut off weird spots and they take full advantage of that bigger display. But I love seeing this, like the side-by-side -side comparison. It's so much more attractive on that nice big display. And 
our last story of the day has to do with a new slidable display that is going to be potentially unveiled at CES basically today, tomorrow, within the next couple of days from Samsung. And this thing is really, really cool looking. This is coming out of Korea and they're saying that open the screen and stretch it again. Samsung display form factor innovation, foldable, slidable hybrid panel development, screen expandable from eight inches all the way up to 12.4 inches will be unveiled at CES. And you can see how it's going to look and get bigger and bigger and bigger. And you know, just by basically sliding it out. And obviously, if it's gonna be this big, I mean, I guess it could be a phone then turn into a tablet, but I really think it's gonna end up being a tablet. If they do release this as a full product, I can't imagine they're gonna release a, a phone with a tw ultimately a 12.4 inch display. It just seems, I, I, would I be happy with it? I'd be completely fine, but I just can't imagine they will do that. So I think this will come out as a tablet uh, when it does come up, but it's pretty cool stuff and I can't wait to actually see more of this, especially if it launches at CES. We only have one story for you today. I currently though, before we get into the news, am in Las Vegas. You can see, I forget the name of that hotel. What's the name of that hotel? Luxor. Luxor, well we're in Luck. well we're, well, I shouldn't tell you where I am, but <laughs> whatever. Yeah. Anyways, Excalibur, that's Excalibur. So. I'm here in Vegas for CES. It's the Consumer Electronics Show where they companies show off all their newest like gizmos and gadgets and um, products that may or may not ever come out or are coming out really soon or are out. Um, so if anything catches my eye, I'll make a video on it. Um, but otherwise, if you want to see something specific here, let me know in the comments down below. Maybe I can, you know, maybe I'm not thinking about it or I won't see it and I can check it out. But the story I wanted to talk about today was all about the Pixel Fold. The latest rumors slash information that are coming out about this foldable phone that will be a competitor to the Galaxy Z Fold 4 and 5 when that comes out is that it's getting pushed back to quarter four of 2023. Now, I heard something a, I'd say a couple months ago, and I asked this person, I was like, hey, is the Pixel Fold coming out? And they went, huh, huh, nudge, nudge. Um, and they and, I, and when I was like, oh, it's coming out in March or May, and they kind of like said, no, it's probably gonna come out uh, around the same time as the Pixel 8, 8 Pro. Now, this kind of lines up with that, this latest rumor. Something I heard months ago is also, again, lining up with this latest rumor that it's gonna be released and push back to quarter four of 2023, which I guess kind of makes sense because they generally release their new phones, especially the Pixel 8 and 8 Pro, their premium phones in October of the year. So it looks like if you were waiting for the May release of the Pixel Fold, it looks like we're gonna have to wait, at least based off this rumor, that you'll have to wait until probably October, November, I doubt December, so October, probably November or 2023 before we can get on it, which puts it in direct competition with the Galaxy Z Fold 5 because Z Fold 5 will be out in August or September at the latest. And that phone, who knows, maybe a completely different look to it. Obviously, really, really nice specs, great camera, really powerful processor with that Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. There will be things about the Galaxy Z Fold 5 that are better than the Pixel Fold when it comes out, such as the performance. As we know, the, the, the processor inside of the Pixel phones, the Tensor G2, is a fairly powerful processor. It does everything you want, does it fast, but it's not as powerful as a, a, a Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 will be, which not a huge deal, but still something to know. Today is actually day one of CES. Um, the I've been here for two days, but um, those first two days are kind of like all these pre parties and pre-events and kind of get events to kind of get you ready and give you maybe get you in more personal contact with the vendors versus like battling everybody. Um, so again, today is the very first day of that. So if you say anything cool, I'll post it on like Instagram or maybe a YouTube short. Uh, so keep your eyes peeled that. If you want to follow me on social media, it's Greggles TV everywhere at Twitter, at Instagram, at TikTok, and on YouTube, of course. So today's stories are all about the Galaxy S 23 Ultra. Um, and we're going to talk about this. We're going to talk about some mostly good stuff, but there is something in there that it's not bad, but it's kind of interesting because it, that we will get to it. So let's talk about the good stuff first. So, and all these stories I'll link down below. So if you want to read these tweets, 
um, you know, after the fact to see more you know, graphics, basically, um, you can do that in the link in the description down below. So the first is all about some of the things that we maybe knew or didn't know about the Galaxy S23 Ultra, some slightly smaller things, but things that are still important. Um, so first of all, it will include Gorilla Glass Victus 2, so it's going to have that ultra um, durable glass you know does it mean it's not going to break or scratch ever 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 no but it just means it's going to be you know one of the best yeah, that that's currently available the best that's currently available um, it's going to have an armor aluminum frame so if you drop it again it's going to be a little bit more durable ip68 which hasn't changed has been that for years now which means um, it can go underwater and uh, it's dust resistant uh, not forever but f you know at certain levels it's, it has ai vdis front and back optical stabilizer so it sounds like the it has not only has optical stabilization but it also has i guess our, i don't know if the ai is just the branding or artificial intelligence but obviously it has uh, front and back camera stabilizers DDR5 RAM, which is, I don't know if it, I think that's the best RAM. I don't think they have DDR6 yet. I could be wrong on that, but DDR5 RAM, so ultra fast RAM, uh, 200 megapixel optical, optical image stabilization, and two times wider and better double. So basically, it's got that new camera, which, which we've talked about, 200 megapixel camera, up from the 108 megapixel camera currently on their ultra phone. Cameras DX, so the camera glass protection layer is camera dx uh, back camera has artificial intelligence which let's be honest it all kind of always did so that's not really anything but supposedly we've heard it's improved which is always great um some of the stuff that google does with their cameras and what we why i personally like it so much is it does have artificial intelligence built in there it's got computational photography which improves the look of the photos you can take a low megapixel uh, maybe even a, a, not a great camera overall and get some beautiful photos. Um, Pixel does a great job at that. And it seems like Samsung's improving in that based off of some of the rumors that we're hearing. Super HDR for your photos on there, um, which again, great. So you, get, you get more you know, dynamic photos on there with you know blacks and colors and things like that. Now getting to the story of where things get a little... Uh, again, not bad, but just something to be like, yeah, why, you know, why didn't they go for the best on this? That's what's kind of weird. So the tweet comes from Ice Universe, and he goes, unfortunately, Samsung's flagship smartphone screen lost to the iPhone 14 Pro for the first time, which, and we'll get to into that in a second, but it's weird that he says that because Samsung makes their own displays, but they also make the iPhone display. So like, why wouldn't they give themselves the best display? So basically, it sounds like what happened is, if you remember, the brightness on the S23 Ultra is going to be 1750 nits of brightness, and iPhone, if I'm not mistaken, is at 2000, and that's just you know 2000. It's not. It doesn't have to reach a certain thing. Like you turn up the brightness, it gets to that. Now, he goes on to say that no one can surpass the peak brightness of iPhone 14 up to 2400 nits. So I guess it's 2400 nits. I'm sorry iPhone 100 iPhone 14 Pro is 2400 nits and the the Galaxy is 1750 and so it's not as bright. Now it doesn't mean it's a, the display is awful. It doesn't mean you're not going to be able to see it. It just means iPhone's going to continue take continuing to have the brightest display overall by a pretty large margin, which is kind of surprising. I still feel like when I look at an iPhone, I look at a, a Galaxy phone no, no matter what lighting setting, have it be outside or whatever. I don't know, it just seems like to me, Samsung still has a brighter display, even though it might not anymore. Um, very interesting stuff that Samsung wouldn't go to that next layer. I can't, maybe it's they're worried about battery life, maybe they're worried about, or maybe they signed some exclusive deal with, with Apple to give Apple that title, and they're like, you know what, we'll take a couple rings down, we don't mind. Maybe it has to do with uh, pricing, could be anything. The two new stories of the day are all about, again, the Galaxy S23 Ultra. It's like an up and down roller coaster ride of a phone release coming because we've heard good stuff, we've heard bad stuff, we've heard stuff that's in the middle. And I want to talk about the brightness of the display because yesterday we talked about the brightness of the display being not as bright as the iPhone 14 Pro Max. iPhone 14 Pro Max will still have a brighter display than the S23 Ultra by a fairly large margin at that, which is crazy because 
Samsung makes the iPhone display. Well, some more information has come out, and it's not all bad news in terms of Samsung versus Samsung phones, S23 versus S22 Ultra. So the information that's coming out saying officially and exclusively, S23 Ultra will support 1750 nits of brightness. But when you reach the highest degree under the sun, the brightness of the colors will be higher and clearer than the S22 Ultra. So if you have an S22 Ultra and you upgrade to the S23 Ultra, or maybe you just want to decide between the two and you want a screen that's going to look better outside directly under the sun, the S23 Ultra will probably be your best bet because it will have it will get brighter and clearer under those conditions. Now, versus an iPhone, it still shouldn't beat that phone, but it'll at least beat the last generation of the S22 uh, Ultra, which I guess at the end of the day is a good thing. Why wouldn't you want it to at least, at the very least, beat um, that? And then we have one other story, and it is about, sorry, I'm like doing this with one hand. Um, it's about the cameras on the front of the Galaxy S23 Ultra. So in the S22 Ultra, the front camera is 40 megapixels. On the S23 Ultra, and we've kind of talked, spoken about this, will be 12 megapixels. So the megapixel count is not impressive versus last generation. It's a lot less. But the information that's coming out is that the 12 megapixel front camera will have pro mode on that front camera, which again, that's a good thing. You want complete control like you did the back cameras on pro mode. Uh, I would guess a lot of people still don't use pro mode. There are people that use it. So if you're going to harp on this and say, I use it, I use it. I understand that, but I think it's a, not a lot of people that actually do use it in the grand scheme of things. Now, also night photography in the front camera, photo and video quality will be improved due to dual pixel technology. This gives you the best photo or picture in the lowest possible light camera and has become lower, but the quality is higher. So basically what the information that's coming out is saying is that if you get the S23 Ultra, the front camera, even though it's lower megapixels, should look better quality than the S22 Ultra um, in terms of the quality of the photo, the lighting should be more so improved. Um, and that's, again, a good thing. It's just when you when you match numbers to numbers, you've got, especially on a, on a consumer level, if, if someone's that um, uh, smart about things, uh, they might be like, oh, you know what? This is a downgrade. Why did they downgrade this premium phone versus last year's phone? But at the end of the day, apples to apples when you're taking photo to photo, the S23 Ultra should still look better. What do you guys think? Uh, today, though, we have a great story. Great, great story, and it confirms some things so let's talk about it so if you've been following social media and you might have seen this already but it looks like samsung galaxy unpacked has officially been confirmed why because samsung's columbia website has leaked out the information that samsung's galaxy unpacked will be on february 1st 2023 and that's what we've been hearing so that all rings to be very very confident in what that is um all about so we you know it's there's nothing hugely different on that also the little tagline it's written in spanish but uh, it translates to uh, epic moments are coming so that's a, a good thing to be heard uh, epic moments usually mean a very very impressive device of things to come you can also see that the cameras have a ring around them so that would be um, a little bit different I guess uh, silver ring whatever color that is uh, on there to go with the Galaxy S23 Ultra phone and other than that there's not much more we can take away from it other than you know you can see the phone at least it looks like it's looking a black color uh, it was ultimately taken down though after they posted it looks like it was posted as a mistake but I would bet, because we're coming up on this very, very soon, that come Monday or Tuesday of this coming week, this information will officially go out. So two things I think that are going to happen are they are going to say Samsung Galaxy Unpacked is going to be on this date. Like it will officially come out from other um, the channels of their site and social media. And then I also think that they'll have a sign up page as well to go along with all this so that you can get your pre pre order going with these devices. So your question. we've got a very interesting 
news story about the foldable line of foldables and rollables and when they'll be released and some information about these phones from Samsung. So I wanna dive right into this. We also have a couple of questions that I'll be answering towards the end of this video. So without further ado, let's dive right in. Now, like I said, this is all about the foldable and rollables coming soon to Samsung. Here's, here's the tweets coming from Gary who got it from Blog Neighbor, which I'll link both down below if you wanna check either one of these out. So Samsung's smartphone form factor roadmap. So the Z Fold 5 Gen, first bit of information that's coming out about that is it'll be lighter than the Z Fold 4 and other phones that they released before in terms of the foldable line, which, okay, lighter, is gonna be, a, 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 it's, it's a good selling point in a lot of ways for, for people, um, especially the consumer that doesn't want a heavy phone, so I think this will help with that. Um, lighter, to me, sounds like either the specs are gonna be down a little bit or the, the battery's gonna be smaller or something like that, uh, which is not a good thing in my eyes. Budget's foldable smartphone, so a fold light and a flip light, and different screen size model will be added um, late. And it doesn't say specifically when that's gonna happen. It may be late 2024, if that's what he's talking about, or that's gonna be the Galaxy Tab Fold, because the next line, he mentions Galaxy Tab Fold, which is similar period when Samsung's foldable product. So it sounds like um, potentially the foldable fold light and flip light will be released in late 2024 alongside a Galaxy Tab Fold. Uh, a foldable tablet and all, also Apple's foldable tablet or phone will also be released in late of 2024. And then come 2025, you're looking at the Z-Shape Roll Stretch 360 phone. Again, that'll be their rollable stretch phone that comes out 2025. So not this year, not next year, but 2025. So some exciting stuff to come up for sure in terms of the foldable and flip line. It just sounds like it's gonna be about two years away rather than maybe this year or next year was what I was expecting 2024, but it doesn't also surprise me that it could roll into, no pun intended, 2025. Uh, due to the factor of these phones still are gaining more popularity, and if the more you add, they might be freaked out, but like, oh my God, now it, it doesn't just fold, it now slides out or flips out or rolls out. That could scare some of their audience away, so I can see them taking their time, making sure they get these devices to be the best they can be. But that's your question of the day. What do you think about the rollable, slidable phones not coming out for another two plus years? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Without further ado, let's jump into our Q&A portion of the video. First question comes from Subhats that it's rumored that Samsung may increase the price of the S23 series. Is there any sense to spend a thousand for a same future phone like last year's S22 series? Yeah, that's the rumors is about $100 or $120 more per phone on there, but we also heard that last year and it didn't come true. Um, so if it does come true where it is $100 more, for most people, I think they'll still upgrade for the real reason of upgrading, is it worth it to upgrade? It's probably honestly not any reason, if it was $100 cheaper too, it's still probably not really a reason to upgrade. I think when they add in, add in the, the trade-in value and you get closer to basically paying nothing, then yeah, sure, upgrade. But if you have to pay brand new out of the pocket and you don't want to trade or you can't trade your phone, I'd probably say don't upgrade. Based off, again, this is very preliminary information. And our last question from MSOG24, when pre-ordering with trade-in, can I return the phone to Samsung store? Um, that's a great question. You probably can, but I don't know why you wouldn't just want to ship it off to them. Uh, unless you're worried about it getting lost in the mail or them denying it because they said it wasn't in the box. But if you follow my steps, take a, a, a photo, uh, take a video of everything you do when you're returning it, including dropping it off and boxing it up and all that stuff, you should be safe. Uh, I would rather just ship it off unless you live right next to a Samsung store, which of course you can just go ask them. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. If you have a question, leave it in the comments down below with the hashtag question. We'll see you down the road. Peace.